without question, the best result and performance of the season. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Oxford United Review Show. Tonight, Oxford United host Doncaster. I don't know where Doncaster are based. I'm assuming somewhere in Scotland. Uh, but enough. Enough of that. Ian, pre-match news. Talk to me. Okay, so uh, as you can imagine, what seems to be happening most week, there are changes week to week. There's so many games in a short space of time. Taylor came back in up front instead of Addington the third. Not a surprise there. We played Shadipo and Barker on the flanks, which is awesome to see. Kelly came back into centre midfield. Elliot Lee probably just not fit enough to play two games in a short space of time. Goran back in the holding role. No surprises there. Overcome his injury. And uh, Jamie Hansen had to replace Anthony Ford at right back because of a family bereavement to Anthony Ford. Not very nice to hear, but big opportunity for Hansen to impress. He gets limited game time, but uh, looking forward to seeing how he gets on. It's a very much changed Doncaster side from the side that played us last time. There's a few notable absentees, uh, but they've still got Okunabirhi up front. They've still got uh, Richards who caused us a lot of trouble in that away game. It was a very good game between the two sides. But when I look at this Donny side and I see, one, they haven't got the Falcon in goal. Uh, don't know oh, why. No. Don't ask the fans, let us know. And they're having to play James Coppinger. Um, makes me seem that they are missing a few players. Not that he's a bad player, but he must be like 80 years old now. Uh, I was really <laughs> confident. Weirdly, Tom, I was. I normally have the the nerves and the anxiety on match days for Oxford. But I was really confident before this game. I thought Oxford played well against Hull. I know they lost 2-0, but I thought they're going to put in a good shift today. And hopefully, they're going to win. Okay, before we get copyrighted, Oxford have beaten Doncaster Rovers. They've done it, Ian. You can only get copyrighted for songs that people know what they are. That, that just sounded like um, you, I don't know what you were doing. A party like it's 1999. Oh, that what it was. Okay. As I said at the start of the thing, at the start of the video, without a shadow of a doubt, this is Oxford's best performance and result of the season. It was a brilliant display. Oxford United win. Oxford United get some goals. It ended Oxford United three, Doncaster Rovers nil. Ian, I am in shock. I cannot believe this. This is a team that's been almost completely incapable of scoring, and when they have scored, it hasn't very many. But three goals. And all in the first half. Ian, tell me about the first half. It sounds incredible. I know. It's like the only thing to talk about, really, is the first half of this game. It's uh, usually, as we say, Oxford United first half. You can just sort of put the computer on in the background and go off and do something else and come back at half time. But not in this game. They were excellent, really, from, from start to finish. I, I, I had a feeling, I knew the last time the sides met was a very open game, and I thought that would be the same again. And that, I think, suited both sets of players really they'd have a lot of time on the board they'd have a lot of space and they'd have a lot of opportunities to drive in on goal and uh the biggest thing the intensity in Oxford's game was there the effort in Oxford's game was there and they really just put Doncaster on the back foot mainly by a high press which is really just sort of they won so many balls off their goalkeeper the goalkeeper had, like he made some good saves but he had a mare passing the ball out he nearly absolutely gifted a goal to Oxford at the start with Liam Kelly um, but Liam Kelly can't score goals, can he? So he just side-footed it straight back to the keeper instead of putting it into an empty net. And that that really, it, it was a good Oxford performance, but the only thing that we just felt was the goals weren't coming. And the longer the goals weren't coming, the more frustrating you were going to get because Doncaster win are obviously a good side in this league. And they really tried to pass their way out from the press and they caused a lot of their own problems. But the times they did play beyond it, they looked really dangerous and they ran in at Oxford's defence quite a few times beyond the midfield. But Oxford's defence is in good form and they were either to crowd, crowd them out without causing too many troubles for Jack Stevens. But the goals did come for Oxford United. And if you could have picked a person to get the goals, I think everybody would have gone for Matty Taylor. He hasn't scored since the end of January He's our top goal scorer and we needed him to get goals. And he got one here today. The guy, the guy Brandon Barker, caused Halliday, their fullback, no end of nightmares all the way through the match. Whenever he got it, he just it was very much kick and rush a lot from him and Shadipo today. Really put their fullbacks under pressure. He got down the line. He put a cross in. Brannigan, who was always trying to drive into the box, got there but kind of miskicked it. But instead of it going to a, a defender or just going out of play, it fell to Taylor, who was able to just sort of shovel it in past the goalkeeper. It was a... 
Very good strikers finish, very much what Oxford United have been lacking and very much what we needed. Ian, things got even better from there, didn't they? They did, Thomas, yeah. They didn't rest on their laurels at all. They kept going, they kept with the intensity and you felt like if Oxford really wanted to kill the game off in this first half and, and they did. It wasn't the greatest goal, but it was a free kick on the edge of the box and it was one of those ones where it was... Shadipo had played the ball in and he was fouled after he'd already played the ball. And much like we saw with Arsenal against Spurs, the referee has given a, a free kick to the attacker to Oxford, whereas like in recent weeks, you might not have got that free kick. But Oxford got it. It was played in by Kelly. It was a free header by Ruffles at the back post. He really should have done better with it. But Oxford's luck was in today. It's just hit Matt Taylor and gone in the back of the net. Doncaster appealed for offside. But there ain't no VAR in this league. And I thought he looked onside anyway. Um, so two goals for Taylor. Every sort of like bit of bad luck he's had throughout the weeks just came back in this one. It was great to see him getting two goals. But Oxford killed this game off Thomas with uh, on right on the stroke of halftime, where a good move again, where we won the ball up high and Barker got Shadipo in. It was a lovely finish by Mr. Tuesday Night himself, the man who can't stop scoring on Tuesday nights at the Kassam Stadium. I mean, it's something like 11 goals, and I think that's eight for him on a Tuesday night at the Kassam Stadium. So he's got a crazy record there. Uh, but a wonderful first half performance by Oxford. You, you, the game felt over, but you're always a little bit nervous if Donny could have got one back maybe at the start of the second half. I mean, you and I know what the final score is, but what happened in that second half? Oxford carried on playing really well. I mean, again, Doncaster, like, I wouldn't say they played badly in this game. They, they just, Oxford was just on form. Like, they really, the, the effort from defense, the way they defended and the way they pressed as a team was just fantastic. The way they, every time Doncaster got a sniff of our goal, it was crowded out really well. People putting blocks and bodies on the line. Oxford really could have got a fourth. They had, some great chances at the start of the second half. Shots from the edge of the box from Shadipo and from Brannigan, who, geez, he just can't buy a goal. Uh, but the goalie did actually make some good saves in the second half. Uh, Taylor came very close to getting a hat-trick. Adji came on, came very close to doing what he did against Swindon and scoring with pretty much his first touch. But it it just felt... It didn't... It just felt that it was one of those games where Doncaster just weren't going to score. And, and Oxford, right, it, what, the effort and the intensity... Did drop a little bit, but not to the point where we allowed, where you felt we were going to give up a three-goal lead, and that's the way it finished. It finished um, Oxford United three, Doncaster nil. Brilliant performance, and you can't fault it at all. Was there a, a change in tactic, the change in play? Like how 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 has Oxford come out and played so differently than they have in recent weeks? Well, I, th I think Robinson. He said before the game he wanted to. His expression he used was play with the handbrake off, and I think he was wanted to go at Doncaster. And, and as I said a couple of weeks ago, try and risk losing the game to go, go win the game, even if you, you risk losing the game um, in the process. And they really did that with the two wingers in um, Shadipo and in Barker. It just gave Oxford the opportunity to give the ball to them and just, and they give them license to just run at Doncaster. And they absolutely did. They caused a lot of problems. Uh, the two fullbacks, Hanson and Ruffles supported them up, up well as well. But I think really, the, the game was won through Oxford's high press. And I think as much the defence played really well, but I think Brannigan and, um, and I'll give him his due for once, Liam Kelly had really good games for Oxford in the midfield. The way they really pressed, they really caused a lot of problems in there. They really made, penned Doncaster back and really put them on the back foot. And, um, and it, really, it really gave Oxford a lot of momentum and they looked a lot more like the side I saw last season where they were really like on top of their game and then coincide that with a defence that's not giving away anything and a goalkeeper that just lives for clean sheets. It's the recipe for a, for a very good Oxford United performance and uh, hopefully that'll carry on into the next few games. And with this victory, Oxford move up to eight, which doesn't seem like a lot, but they've now passed Portsmouth. Ipswich are only a point above them, have dropped out of the playoff zones. They've got one of the best goal differences outside the top four. They're only two points off Charlton, who've played two more games than them. All of a sudden, the future looks rosy for Oxford United. It's amazing, isn't it? It's a when, when you, it's it's such an it seems like an easier thing to fix. If you're bad at the back, that seems really hard to fix. If you're bad up front, it only takes one good game and everything seems right with the world. All of a sudden, the players look 
like they've got so much more energy going about them. They've got so much more of a spring in their step. Taylor looks like 20 years younger when he's running about the pitch, when he's got a goal in him, um, chasing things down that he maybe wouldn't have chased a, a week or so ago. Uh, and it, it, I, I, I did say it won't go on like that. Oxford will get a little run where the goals do start to come back. And hopefully that is the case. And I do give credit to, I do give credit to Robinson for not like coming out there and just saying, Oh, we're injured. We got a lot of injuries. We got a lot of key players out. Let's just sit back and sit in the game. He thought, no, let's go on it. Let's get on the front foot. Let's attack them. Let's get goals and let's win this football match um, outright. And And I think that is, absolutely what the fans want to see and absolutely the the right way to go about it. And with results like that, you're confident. And if Oxford can continue that form, you're confident going into any game we play. And I I really am confident going into this Blackpool game now at the weekend. Yep, that's right. It's Blackpool this weekend and we will be live streaming from 2.45. Join us on Saturday for that. All that's left for me to do is to thank all of you for watching. Please smash the like button, hit subscribe, Visit Grandstand Betters. They're a fantastic tips website. Get your predictions in. Yes. They have to be in by Thursday at 5 o'clock if you want them included in our preview show, which comes out Friday. Any later than 5, and don't bother. We, 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 like, we literally record at 5 o'clock on a Thursday. That's it. The details are on the screen, and you can be part of the show, so why wouldn't you want to do it, especially after this fantastic win today? You should be giddy with delight. It only takes 10 seconds to do. Just get your predictions videos into us. And more than anything else, enjoy it, Oxford fans. A wonderful victory. Sleep well. And we'll see you soon.